Hey, this is Ocean K with a look at some updated functionality to Carve. A Carve is a dynamic EQ ducker. If you're not familiar with Carve or you don't uh, know what a dynamic EQ ducker is, go ahead and watch this video. This video goes through the basic functionality of Carve and shows you a couple examples of how you might use this when you're mixing a song together. So this video is about a new piece of functionality that was added in Carve 1.0.1. And that new piece of functionality is this sense knob or sensitivity knob. Now, uh, let's start with a basic setup. This is the same setup as the introduction video where this subtractor plays just white noise. Uh, and this subtractor, this subtractor just plays a sine wave, right? Now Carve is here, the white noise audio goes through the signal in and the signal out goes to the white noise mix channel and the sine subtractor goes into the reference in and the through uh, goes into the um, sine wave mix channel. And so what this means is that we're EQing the white noise signal based on a profile that's analyzed from the sine wave. All right, so let's just go ahead and see that uh, happen. All right, so we're playing our white noise here. When I play the sine wave, we see we get a cut here, all right? And this cut corresponds to where this frequency is. We can change this frequency. Right, so wherever our frequency is um, of our incoming sine wave, that's what's being cut. Now. Right now, this cut is pretty extreme. It's also pretty wide, right? But that's sort of how filters work. And we can see that even looking at um, the M-class equalizer. So if we just do a cut here, and we'll make it as narrow as we can, the M-class equalizer goes from an 18 dB boost to a negative 18 dB cut. So at negative 18, we can see that this particular uh, filter, this cut, is about as wide as one of these little sections here, from 625 hertz to 1.2 kilohertz, right? But if we make that a subtler cut, so instead of 18, if it's just maybe 6, we can see that the width of the cut is much narrower, and a 3 dB cut is even more narrower. Uh, so that's about a 3 dB cut, right? It's very, very narrow. It just happens to be the way the, that uh, EQing works or filtering works, just the deeper the cut, the wider the cut ends up being. And so how do we know how much cut uh, Carve is applying to our signal? Well, it looks at the amplitude of all the frequencies in the reference signal, and it cuts based on those same amplitudes. So for example, when we're looking at uh, our uh, sine wave subtractor, it's only got essentially a single frequency, uh, and it's peaking at about 30 dB, which means um, in, in reasons numbers here, it's going from negative 36 dB all the way up to 30. Well, that whole distance, right, that's 30 plus 36, or 66 dB. So this particular signal has 36 dB worth of amplitude, essentially. Right, So Carve looks at that and it says, hey, I'm analyzing this reference signal and I see one frequency and that one frequency has 66 dB worth of amplitude volume. And so if Carve, if we tell Carve, whatever you see coming in, cut that from our audio signal, then it's going to cut 66 dB worth of, of amplitude volume at that particular frequency. And so if we play our white noise subtractor again, it cuts 66 dB. It's actually cutting much, much more below where this graph can show us, but this is just all our graph can show here in reason. Um, because it's cutting 66 dB worth of signal, it ends up being pretty wide, right? Now, uh, if... If we tell Carve, okay, just uh, just Carve one for one, so you see 66 dB coming in, Carve out 66 dB going out, 
um, that's just a one-to-one. -one. But maybe we don't want to cut one-to-one. -one. We want to say, whatever you see coming in, cut just half of that from the incoming signal, or a quarter of it. Um, we can scale that using this amount knob. Now, this amount knob doesn't just go from zero, it's marked as zero to 100 because that's the amount of the cut. But 100% actually is a tripling of the incoming signal, an amount at 0%, that's zero of the incoming signal. And so uh, if we have an incoming signal of, zero, of 60 dB at zero, it's going to cut zero, right? But if at 100%, that's tripling. And so 60 dB times 3 is uh, 60, 80, 180 dB. Right? So if we've got our incoming signal that's going from negative 36 to 30, that's 66, right? 66 times 3 is uh, 6 to 10. It's, it's over 200. It's about 200 dB worth of signal. And so that's why when we really crank our amount knob all the way up and then we play our white noise, and then we play our sine noise, our, our cut is so, so wide because we're cutting 200 dB worth of signal. Whereas if you wanted to pull that amount knob back to where we're only cutting, oh, maybe 20 dB, right? Which is still, you know, a good amount. Um, then we can see our width is much, much narrower. All right. Now, sometimes you do want to cut you know, 20 dB worth of signal or 24 dB worth of signal. And often this would happen if, for example, um, you have a kick drum and a bass line, and when that kick drum hits, you just want that bass line to drop out to essentially at least a couple, the, the bass end, the bottom end of the bass signal or where the kick drum is, you want that to drop out. You want a 20 dB or 24 dB cut because you want that kick drum to really punch through. And so that's why the amount can go from 0 to 100. Now, another thing just to note is that right now, we've got an incoming signal of our sine wave of 30 dB. But often you don't have that much volume. You know, if you've got something that's, you know, pretty subtle, right? Here is just uh, 30, negative 30 to negative 6. So we've only got about 30 dB worth of signal here, right? So even a doubling of that, you're, it's a 60 dB cut. And that is still extreme, but it's not quite as crazy as a 200 dB signal. All right, so but let's bring that back up to 60. Now, this is all well and good until you try to do very, very subtle cutting with very hot signals. So you see right now we've got a signal that's a very hot signal at 30 dB. But what if we wanted to use this, you know, signal that's 66 dB worth of volume, but we just wanted to do like a 1 dB cut or a 2 or a 3 dB cut. We could pull the amount knob back um, and we can even see how we can do this, right? So if we wanted Without it, we're getting somewhere in the neighborhood of about a 3, the white noise is about a negative 3 dB, a cut, right? We're seeing this little cut here, but it's going from 3 to about negative maybe 9 to 12, right? So still, that's 6 to, uh, six to 9 dB worth of cut. We can bring it down a bit more, and we're starting to see, you know, maybe this is closer to a 3 dB cut. Um, so we can get very sort of detailed cuts. The problem is our amount knob is at 2% right here. And so if we want subtle like 1 or 2 or 3 dB cuts, we're essentially left to uh, this amount knob in the area of about you know 0 to 5%, which isn't a whole lot of area to do very, very detailed cutting. And so what we've done is we've added this sensitivity knob. This sensitivity knob is essentially a trim on the reference uh, incoming signal. Now remember, our reference signal, whatever comes in, is sent out. So there's no actual change to the signal that's going to the mix channel. But when Carve builds its profile based on the incoming reference signal, 
If sensitivity is 100%, then an incoming 30 dB signal means a 30 dB signal. Uh, and so we can, uh, we can uh, change that amount uh, to scale that 30 dB signal, but Carve is looking at that 30 dB signal and then doing you know 5% or 3% or whatever it is of that. But if sensitivity is, for example, at 50%, then when we have a, th a 30 dB signal coming in, Carve is gonna interpret that as a 15 dB signal or half of that 30 uh, dB signal. If we've got sensitivity at 25%, then an incoming 30 dB signal is going to be interpreted as a quarter of 30, or uh, what's that, 7.5 dB, right? So if we pull our sensitivity way down, let's say our sensitivity is at 5%, and then we're going to play our white noise again, and our, um, our sine wave, we can see that if our amount is all the way cranked up, we're only getting you know, maybe 6 dB cut, which means that we've got all of this area between uh, 0 and 100% to dial in exactly the cut we want. And now we can differentiate between a cut of 3 dB and 4 dB and 5 dB because our sensitivity of the incoming signal is cranked way down. All right. So the upshot is if you want to do very, very subtle cutting, with carve of only just one or two or three dB at a time, you can now do that much, much easier because you can change the sensitivity of the incoming signal that carve analyzes when it's doing its cuts. So if you want to do very subtle three dB shifting, bring the sensitivity way down and you've got a much more uh, area, uh, much more uh, uh, sort of more detailed way of dialing in exactly the amount of cut. But if you still want extreme cuts, if you want a kick drum to essentially obliterate a particular frequency of a, um, a bass line, you can do that. Leave that sensitivity up, do that amount, you know, as extreme as you want, and you can get really extreme, nice sound sculpting options. All right. So that is the sensitivity knob that's updated in Carve 1.0.1, which is available in the shop now. All right. Thanks for watching.